Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today I wanna to start a little bit of a different series about large format. I made lots of videos about large format, but this time I wanna start diving into a topic at a time. We're gonna start with different kinds of large format cameras. And I consider large format cameras the ones that use sheet film. Obviously, you can load sheet film into some medium format cameras and some roll film into a large format cameras, but let's just make a quick division on anything that shoots uh, sheets is considered large format. So uh, if you don't know what large format is, quickly, uh, we have 35 millimeter cameras like this Ford camera here, but it was basically shoots the small rolls, 36 exposures, 24 exposures, like the Leica, Nikon F3, Canons, and stuff, stuff like that. Then we have medium format, which is 120 film and 220 film that basically shoots uh, six by six negatives. You have the Bronica that I have there. We have folders like this. We have Hasselblad's Rolleiflex, stuff like that. And then we go into large format, which is basically a sheet film. Like I said, there's different sizes of large format. So we'll get into a different video about the different sizes, but the most common flavor of large format is four by five. Also in Europe, it used to be nine by 12, kind of died off and now it's four by five mostly. So obviously these cameras started with folders like this one here, nine by 12 was, like I said, a common thing, but four by five is the one we have. So the first kind of camera that I like to talk about is the field camera. Field is in, I can put it in my backpack, I can go hiking, I can take like landscape pictures. These cameras tend to be folding cameras. There's some that are not, but folding cameras. Basically, you set them on a tripod, you unfold them, you screw sometimes the front element, some are not like that. And these cameras tend to be very lightweight, have a bit more limited options and lenses that you can use and movements that you can do. But there's uh, actually a very big fan base of this because they're not heavies, which means that you can carry it out and about for quite a while without breaking your back. This is an Intrepid camera who basically has made large format popular uh, again, which is really nice. I don't think large format had been popular like it is now if it wasn't to, for people like Intrepid. This is their basically black edition camera, 3D printed, but actually not too bad. It's pretty sturdy. It's not the 3D printed uh, spaghettis that we are used to, to some stuff like other cameras. And basically we have Intrepid, we have this Chamonix, and we have other brands that made like Ebony, stuff like that. Some are dead, some are still around. Uh, Intrepid, Chamonix R, we have Shen Hao and other brands making these. These, like I said, have some limited availability of movements, mostly because of the folding and the lightweightness. So sometimes the back standard doesn't have movement. Sometimes they can't change bellows like the Intrepid. Like for example, the Chamonix does let you change bellows. You can use bag bellows for wide angle lenses. You can use an extension and go up to 450 mil lenses and shoot like that. But basically field cameras are meant or usually designed to be used out and about. Obviously you can shoot with one in a studio, but you know, you lose a lot of options shooting with a field camera in a studio. So talking about studio photography, we get into uh, my favorite kind of camera, which is the monorail. The monorail is basically a chunky camera with a lot of independence between the front standard and the back standard and a lot of different uh, accessories and things that go into one of these cameras. The cool thing about the monorail cameras is, like I say, you can accessorize them. They're totally modular. There are obviously some that are not, but you can basically change the bellows. You can like change the front frame. You can add more frames, more rails. You can do all crazy movements because basically they do all kinds of things. Uh, you can change the back. You can change the big, bigger formats. You can make one of these, not this one, but bigger like the CNR and so on. These are, like I said, studio cameras, mostly obviously architecture too, because you can do a lot of more movements and they are super, super flexible cameras, but they weigh a ton. They're like the Swiss army knife. And like I said, a Swiss army knife basically is usually a heavy, big, big pen knife that you don't carry for like a hike. You usually carry like a small one blade knife for a hike because then you can just make yourself a quick sandwich. That is why you have field cameras. This is the Swiss Army knife, which is chunky, big, and bulky. Good thing about these cameras is there's some brands that are super popular back in the day, so there's a zillion accessories. I highly recommend Cinar, for example. It has so many different rails, so many different accessories. They're still available. Cinar still makes stuff today, and I love them. So it's my favorite brand probably in the large format world and monorails are my favorite cameras if I didn't have to carry them out and about. If this camera weighed half the weight compared to the field camera, I would never use a field camera. But yeah, monorail cameras. Like I said, 
heavy cameras, but very, very flexible. Mainly used for studio work, uh, product photography, uh, you know, these like, you know, sets of pictures where you have a, like a column tripod and you basically shoot in the studio. Obviously, like I said, if you take it out and you're doing architecture, like the whole world is your limit. There's no limitations except for image circle and stuff like that. But yeah, there's some really good brands. You have Toyo, you have CNR, you have Arca Swiss, stuff like that. If you can buy something that's still uh, lots of accessories, like I said, available online. CNR, Arca, CNR is probably the most uh, common. I'll leave it there. Cambo is also pretty nice. Then we go to probably the one camera that made a lot of sense back in the day, which is the press cameras. These are cameras that were used, like it, their name says, by press photographers. Back in the day, people like Ouija, which were a forensic uh, photographer, would go with this, use a rangefinder, boom, and a big flash, and you know, freeze any action that they needed. These cameras obviously give you a four by five uh, negative, and you could change the lenses and you can focus on the go. These were meant to be used handheld, even though they do have tripod mounts. These are press cameras, the lens folds inside, they're very convenient, and including this camera, they have a focal plane shutter, which means you can use the lenses that don't have shutters. This is actually a shutter and a camera all in one, which is really nice if you're combining it with the Aero Ektar, like David Burnett, stuff like that, you can shoot all kinds of crazy things with it. But yeah, these cameras were really, really well made by Graflex. There's a ton of them. There's different brands that made press cameras, but the Graflex were the king of it, uh, basically. Super, super nice cameras, made out of wood, even though you won't believe it. But yeah, I highly recommend this camera if you're into a bit of more of the history. But yeah, love my uh, Graflex. Um, so press cameras. Then we have another one that's also supposed to be handheld, which is cameras like this uh, camera dactyl OG. These are cameras that have no movements. So uh, one thing about the press also, very limited movements, just in case, but so they do have movements. This one has no movements. This is basically a point and shoot four by five camera made in 3D printed. This, like I said, is not as refined as the Intrepid, but this is also made to basically be driven over by a car. Uh, Ethan makes these and they're really fun cameras. I wouldn't take them too seriously, just as much as I don't take uh, camera dactyl too seriously in some ways. I love uh, the cameras, but they're fun, chunky cameras to be used without thinking too much. Uh, that's the, the idea of a point and shoot camera to me. Um, so yeah, this shoots four by five, has bungee cords for putting the film holder inside. You can have different lens cones and he designs different ones, uh, which you can change with screws and so on. This started with a global scope, if I'm not wrong. Then the travel wide made it popular again uh, with an early Kickstarter when Kickstarters weren't that much of a thing. And this one is now a version by, like I said, camera dactyl. But these are lenses that usually are small because you want it lightweight, you don't want it front heavy that you use by setting some uh, etchings and markings that you've corrected with this. You can put it on a tripod and shoot normally, but they're more fun to take handheld. I've shot a ton with my travel wide with uh, FOMA 400 push to 1600, basically as a humongous point and shoot. Uh, and it's amazing what you can get when you're shooting sheet film in a way that you would usually with any of these other cameras. So yeah, this is the, what I call the point and shoot cameras. Then we have a couple others. We have the Graflex uh, SLR cameras. These are the Graflex Super D and some other ones. They came in three by four, uh, four by five, five by seven, I think even eight, eight by 10. They're basically like a Hasselblad with a waist level finder. And when you shoot, it has also focal press, um, focal plane shutter, which basically lets you shoot handheld while you're watching the action, which is kind of mind blowing. If you ask me, I've never used one or seen one, but they're really cool cameras. And a lot of people are using them nowadays because of what I'm saying. You can basically use them like a humongous, uh, Hasselblad. They usually don't have a lot of movements, but they have that thing that you can hand hold it and it's like holding a milk carton like the old crates and shooting with that. Uh, and then we also have the TLR uh, 4x5s or large format cameras. They're probably more than 4x5s. 
These are maybe mostly made by Goland for the Goland Flex. And they're basically like, imagine this camera and on top of this camera, there's another camera, but they're not different cameras. It's the same one. And basically on the bottom, you would be shooting and on the top, you'd be viewing. So you'd be able to view what you were shooting and shoot. So it's basically like a Mamiya C330 that's basically eaten a four x five. These cameras are pretty rare. They're really, really fun. They have matching lenses, obviously, so you can use the taking and the viewing lens to shoot. And uh, they're pretty cool. There was also a Campbell made like this. I don't know the name right now off the top of my head, but they're rare, they're expensive. There's also bigger versions, but they're very, very clumsy and big, but they were meant to be used handheld. So yeah, that's kind of like where I leave it in the large format um, category. Like I said, there's a lot of different ones. There's the banquet cameras, which I'm not gonna get into right now, but these are the old ones that had like a little bed that came out and then you could extend it. So you have triple extension, uh, Kodak made some of them. Then there's a clamshell field, eight by 10, stuff like that. But basically, the categories are those. Uh, I'll be making separate videos on the different movements and options and names of these cameras, the pros and the cons of each camera because they each have obviously pros and cons, which I've gone over now. But uh, large format is one of my favorite things to shoot. I, like I said, the ability to introduce movements and perspective control and correction and uh, you know, focusing here and there without having to stop down the lens, like that stuff is just mind blowing. Um, plus the results when you have a piece, big piece of sh uh, film makes me, you know, smile every single time. Every time you hear full frame, you think this, this, this is more full frame than the full frame. But I understand the concept of full frame. So yeah, basically that's the idea with the series is talk about large format a little bit, different camera types, stuff like that, go slowly like that. I will be doing this series also in Spanish. This is what basically made me do it in English because in Spanish there's not a lot of content. I do suggest Matt Mirage to watch because he did a lot of these videos that I'm doing. I'm trying to fill in with my different perspective on certain topics. But yeah, large format is fun. I hope you guys get into it. It's super, super fun. I do recommend recommend take your steps don't rush into a large format because I've made a video of don't get into large format but I do want to explain it in a way that maybe you'll feel comfortable jumping into it so yeah thanks for watching guys as always I leave uh, my patreon and PayPal donation if you feel like me making more of these videos it really he helps me keep doing this kind of explainer more calm video but yeah a lot of information to unpack for those that maybe were interested in large format I hope that helped you see you in the next one bye